الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي أنزل على أبتك الكتاب وحلم يحيى الله إواج أكمده سبحانه وتعالى وأشكره وهو أهل الحمد والثناء وأشهد أن لا إله إلا وده لا شريك الله وأشهد أن محمد نبده سر ومستافع اللهم صل وسلم على بك رسولك محمد وأهله وصحبه وسلم Praise be to the one Allah who revealed the book to his servant Muhammad وسلم, and did not make any distortion to it. I praise him Allah, the exalted one and the high. And I thank him, it is he who deserves the praise and gratitude. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one who has no partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is the servant of Allah, his messenger who was chosen by Allah. O oh Allah, let your blessings and your peace be upon your servant, your messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and on his family and companions. Alhamdulillah bil alameen. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Walillahi alham. Alhamdulillah bil alameen. We thank Allah Almighty for the opportunity of being alive in this time, not just being alive in this time, but being awake in this time. We thank Allah Almighty and we pray to Allah Almighty that he forgive all of those who are on Arafat. SubhanAllah. Very, very powerful a Hajj, a special Hajj uh, this year. This uh, Arafat was, uh, Adam and Eve was forgiven on Arafat. Arafat is to know. And they met on Arafat, Allah Almighty forgave them. And so as a consequence, everyone meets on Arafat for the forgiveness. We go there on hot in the morning for Fajr, stay to Maghrib. And all we're doing all day long is asking Allah Almighty to forgive us, to forgive everybody, to forgive the whole planet, give even insect bites. <laughs> so Allah Almighty is so merciful and we're so so happy uh, for uh, this opportunity to just to be Muslims. To be Muslim. You don't find many people who are proud to be Muslim. But Allah Almighty, if we're going to be proud of anything, be proud that we're Muslim. Amen. SubhanAllah. Because, and then as a Muslim, we are striving uh, to be the best of people for mankind. And Allah Almighty is inviting us. So alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, we thank Allah Almighty for everything and for all the understanding and all those who sacrifice their blood and sacrifice their time to awaken us. We're in a crisis now. The world is in a crisis. And that crisis is because of a misunderstanding. How can we have Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, and we not be one people. Don't we know that Allah Almighty always sends signs, the sign of the sun that hangs in the sky, that everyone can see no matter where they are. All they have to look up and see that there's one sun shining on everybody. So do we get it? Shining on those who call themselves Christians, those who call themselves Muslims, those who call themselves Buddhists, black, white, red, yellow, brown. It means that there is a oneness. There is a oneness. And because if we don't have that oneness and we're not connected or understand that oneness, humanity is divided and conquered by the ignorance of the misunderstanding. None of the prophets, Allah Almighty says about the prophets, may Allah be pleased with all of them, 124,000 of them he sent to humanity. Some of them we know about, some of them we don't know about. But they never said anything to the people that did not address their needs, that did not address their lower desires, to bring them from a low place to a high place. They never addressed the people that they were not reminding them of the promise that they made to Allah Almighty before coming to this life. 
don't understand that that power that was put, that spiritual being that was put in our physical being in the womb of our mother, it was hidden in us. And when it came in us, our body started to develop like a human being. Not a frog or a dog or a rat or a lion, but a human being. And then guidance, not only do we have guidance, we have to have guidance for our dietary health. You just can't eat any kind of food and be healthy because it is about good health. Because health is about your wealth. And if we're not healthy, how can we worship? But there's also a diet for our spiritual being. Because Allah Almighty, when He brought us in existence, He had us in mind through a progression of His will. And we've gotten away from His will. And that's why we find ourselves in 2011 divided and conquered by someone that's inferior to ourselves, Shaitan, the enemy of humanity. When Allah Almighty put that spiritual being in that physical body, it had its orders. Anything that was not of its diet, it could not grow and develop. When you have a child, and that child is born, and if you're not feeding that child properly, it's going to become malnourished. It's, not going to, it's going to be weak, and it's not going to grow and to develop to its fullest potential as a physical being. That spiritual body that Allah Almighty put in us in the womb of our mother. Something from himself that had no beginning and had no end. It knew why it was here. It knows who it is and who it is. Over the years, 124,000 prophets came to humanity to remind them of the diet for the spiritual body. Because the progression of it is that, that when that spiritual being it was placed and hidden in a physical body, and as that physical body was supposed to grow and to develop and started to think rationally, and as that rational mind started to get guidance, and started to practice good adab, good manners, which feeds the soul. It is the food of the soul. And as that soul started to develop, step by step, it started to grow. And the whole intention of our Lord Almighty is that there should be a reversal. When we came here, that soul, that spiritual body was hidden in a physical body. But before we leave this earth, if we reach our greatest potential, that physical body should be hidden in a spiritual body. Making that human being a servant and a representative of Allah Almighty. So when they read the Quran, they see themselves. And then now they're embodied by the oneness of all of those who came to humanity to remind them of the promise that we made to Allah Almighty. How can we keep our promise if Allah Almighty had never put the ability on us to understand and to recognize guidance? What humanity doesn't know today doesn't mean they won't know tomorrow. Something's happening. The world is changing. Good for some, bad for others. Bad for shaitan. You don't want to be running with shaitan in the coming days, I tell you. Allah Almighty, all 124,000 prophets, 
mankind thinking that this was my prophet, that was from my God, this was my prophet from my God, and then some are saying that some of the prophets were God and the Son of God. Don't they know that there's none like unto Allah Almighty? Don't you know he don't have no mother, no father, or he don't give no birth to no children. He's not like any human being. All the prophets could not have been a prophet unless they understood and knew that Allah was writing La ilaha illallah Muhammad or Rasulullah over the throne. When Adam salam, fell from felicity, he was forgiven because he said, Oh Allah, for the sake of that beloved Muhammad, please forgive me. Allah said, how did you know? Allah knew, but he was teaching the angels and everybody else. He said, I saw that name above your throne. That light that was put in Adam, alayhi salam, was the light of Muhammad, alayhi salam, who was not yet on the earth. This is what made him a prophet. Starting the oneness. Starting like the one sun is in the sky. Allah Almighty has not put another sun in the sky. It is the same sun that Adam and Eve saw and everybody else that came after them saw. We are still seeing the same one. Allah is one. Humanity has to understand. Because if we don't understand who we are and whose we are, and not so much who we are and who we want to be, we will never be able to establish Islam. Which is Allah Almighty's intentions. No matter how many books you, you read. If you don't know who you are, you can't distinguish yourself from you being a devil or a servant of Allah Almighty. Our thinking is not in tune with those whom Allah Almighty guided, then we're not in the oneness. We're not in the unity of Allah Almighty. Abraham, alayhi salam, he was able to understand. He says, Oh Allah, if you don't guide me, there is no guidance. He was thinking that the moon or the sun was Allah Almighty. By the light of beloved Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he was guided to Allah Almighty and was made a prophet of Allah Almighty. The world has to know this. Moses alayhi salam, could not have become Moses, could not have been invited to that bush and be sent to Pharaoh with that power unless he said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad or Rasulullah. Joseph, Isaac, Ishmael, Jacob, Jonah, all of them said, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Takbir! La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Before they could connect it to the oneness, what are we? Why are we not doing that? That is the connection to the divine presence. That is the way back to Allah Almighty through his pursuit. Oh oh now when Allah Almighty is sitting the rope of Islam, when Allah sends a rope, it means that we have fallen into some ditches. Allah is sending a rope for us to grab onto, to pull us out. And we can't do that unless there are hearts of people who are connected to the Rasul, who are connected to the beloved Muhammad Sallallahu because the Arabic, the Quran is in the present continuous. It is for all times. He is the prophet for all times. He was the prophet before the first physical prophet came. Everybody's drawn from his lights that have any kind of enlightenment. They love their Lord. They love Allah. 